Oh, 1989, I remember it well. It showed it was cool for even the common man to like comic book movies and Batman being number one in the box office. Your favorite cartoons were replaced with those dumb Ollie North trials. Lunchables made their debut. I still love these. And not only was the Sega Genesis released, but it was also the release of the original Game Boy. It is YouTube law that if you're talking about the Game Boy, you actually got to show one in a video. Imagine a time where Nintendo was your everything. It was your number one passion project. It was your number one hobby. It was the number one thing you love to do was to run home and play Nintendo. And now you have a Nintendo in your pocket. You could take it on road trips. If you're going on family vacations, you still have your escape. I loved my Game Boy so much. It didn't come without flaws. Of course, it had the battery life. The screen was only like a few colors to it. There was no backlighting at the time. But this to me was like the coolest invention ever when it first came out. Unfortunately, when it launched, it only had a few games in its initial year. Yeah, 1989 only saw six Game Boy releases. But don't skip ahead because you need to tell me which one was your favorite in the comments below. And make sure you're subscribed because we're doing more games and more consoles and more years in the future. And in the past, I guess. In one of the most brilliant moves in marketing, in my opinion, the Game Boy launched with Tetris. Now, I understand that the original NES, for the most part, came with Super Mario Brothers, and then later on, of course, it would come with uh, Super Mario World for the Super Nintendo. However, Tetris was the biggest thing happening at this time. Everybody played Tetris. Your grandma played Tetris. Everybody played Tetris. So why not launch a system with the number one seller to sell the system? It just makes sense. They could have sold Tetris separately. They could have, but they didn't because they wanted people to buy a Game Boy and it worked. Simple by design, you can have different things that make it stand out for what each block is or does. Now the original Game Boy did have some ghosting, but this game made it so it wasn't terrible, you know, like it wasn't going to stop you from playing the game and enjoying it too. I'm <laughs> admittedly, I've never been great at Tetris because my strategy is I just want to get as many Tetrises as I can. I see all these pro players all the time and they're just, they're racking points, racking points, dropping them down. I have to let the pieces fall naturally for the most part. But Tetris was the system seller and it came with your Game Boy. And it was so smart of them to do this because really for the most part, all you needed was a Game Boy and Tetris and you're good. You really don't even need the other games. The other games are great but it's really all you needed. I promise you there are people who bought a Game Boy just for Tetris. They never bought anything else. They just needed it for Tetris. I don't blame them. There couldn't have been a better pack-in or launch title, in my opinion, in 1989 than Tetris. Now we have to talk about Super Mario Land because it was so different than the other Mario games for the time. It was like someone played Super Mario Brothers 10 years ago, and then they told them to recreate it just based on memory alone. I mean, it plays like a Mario game. There's these enemies you can jump on. The mushrooms make you grow bigger. They have a power-up item, which isn't really throwing fireballs. They just kind of throw this ball at a 45 degree angle. The jumping feels a little different. Some of the enemies are kind of the same. Hey, some of the enemies you haven't seen in a while, like the fireflies making a return since Mario Brothers. And there's kind of an Egyptian theme throughout this game. Like there's like, there's sphinxes, there's like, you know, hieroglyphics on the walls and stuff like that. The music has kind of an Egyptian vibe to it. Instead of the princess or Princess Peach, you're rescuing Daisy. So introducing a new lady character to the Mario lineup. But this game still feels different overall than like a Mario Brothers or a Mario 2. If you have a child with autism like I do, you might be familiar with the story of Holland. You can look it up online, but to summarize, the poem about Holland is you're planning a vacation to Italy, fast action, fast paced, you're gonna have a whole lot of fun, and when you land, you're in Holland. It wasn't what you asked for. It wasn't what you signed up for. You don't know how to deal with it. But the more you're there, the more you see its beauty. The more you see its different style, different atmosphere. It's not Italy, but it's not bad. It's a different style. It's a different pace. It's its own thing. And Super Mario Land it is its own thing. And you shouldn't quite compare it to like a Super Mario Brothers. It's its own thing. And the more you play it, the more you'll find its own charm the more you'll find its own beauty, the more you'll find its its own thing. Super Mario Land provides a quick playthrough. There's only like four worlds in this one. And hey, you know what? Super Mario Brothers, Mario 2, not even Mario 3, had a shooting stage. It didn't have a shooter stage. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I love it, because I love shooters. So perfect, I'll take it. Super Mario Land, a definite must play. It was a launch title for the Game Boy, and I think Nintendo also knew, well, if you're gonna buy a Game Boy, you're gonna buy the Mario game. Make some extra money that way. Alleyway up next, another game featuring Mario, kind of, because he's the guy who's controlling the uh, little thing below. 
It's Breakout, it's Arkanoid, call it whatever you want to call it. It's another one of those style of games. Still fun though. I still like games like this today. Of course, the fun part is getting it to the top, like through the ceiling. So it's just, you know, keeps on racking points, bouncing around, bouncing around, bouncing around. I don't think the ricochet is as accurate as it could be. Because sometimes, depending on where the ball lands on your player, I suppose, um, it doesn't quite react or quite shoot the angle that you want it to. And sometimes it's kind of annoying to get that very last piece, you know. But this game also does feature a couple of gameplay elements that maybe some of the other breakout type games didn't have. Now, of course, unlike Arkanoid, you're not getting lasers and stuff like that. But it's still kind of a fun, chill game and a perfect Game Boy introduction style game for something like Alleyway. It's great. There's a Castlevania game on Game Boy, a new Castlevania game called Castlevania Adventure, I'm in. Now this game, this was super awesome because it looks like Castlevania. It feels like Castlevania. It even has new music, its own soundtrack. And if you love the Castlevania soundtrack, especially as much as I did, you're like, oh man, awesome. New, new music from Castlevania. They're not even like revamping the old songs. Well, there might be later on, I don't know. And still, a little different from the other Castlevanias. Like you do get your whip upgrades. That's a Castlevania tradition, right? You have your, you start out with your leather whip and you get the chain whip. And then the next evolution from that is you get a whip that can actually kind of shoot a fireball or shoot a ball from its whip. Awesome, I love it. But until you take damage and then Mario style, you lose an upgrade. Oh, then you have to find your upgrade again. Now you do have a lifeline just like the other Castlevania games. So you gotta love that. And even putting this game to that four color pixel vibe, of what it can do for a Game Boy game, it worked out pretty well. Now, it's a little bit slower paced. It's a little bit slower moving than your traditional Castlevania games. That's not a bad thing. I never felt rushed playing this game. Castlevania isn't about rushing through the levels anyway. You're just making your way through. I mean, think about it. Like, whenever you go to the store, like if you're gonna walk down the street to the corner store, do you run? Probably not. You probably just mosey along, you walk, you know, you stroll. Do you run down there? Well, I mean, that's up to you. And again, with the ghosting, that this game had, the tracers, the little blur effects, if things are moving too fast, well, if you slow down a little bit, it does, doesn't show up so bad. So I like the fact that they had that for this game, for Castlevania Adventure. Castlevania Adventure was the final game released for the Game Boy in 1989, and then moving on to 1990, a bunch more releases, but we'll talk about those in a future video. Even has your classic style Castlevania boss fights too. I love it. Well, we gotta have a sports game on here, and we gotta have the baseball game, of course. Nintendo Baseball. They even have the names like Mario and Luigi. Of course they do. It's your classic, traditional baseball-style game for a Game Boy. Not bad. It's just baseball. You know, but it's just like, you know, it's something else to play. Something else fun to have. You know, there are some people who prefer sports games. I mean, you could get, like, sports games especially. They're basically an unlimited supply of gameplay value. You can just play whatever you want. So if you love your baseball games, and baseball video games are usually never terrible, you know. I think they're okay, but, you know, it's just another baseball game. Nintendo Baseball came out for the Game Boy. It was one of the launch titles, and, yeah, why not? Check out some baseball while you're at it. And then with another sports game, we have tennis. Yeah, the Japanese must love tennis or something like that. Tennis, I mean, it's pretty big in the United States. Serena Williams, best of all time, you can't go wrong. But when it comes to sports games, like, you know, you'd figure like a football game or maybe like a basketball game. But no, we have baseball and we have tennis. A couple of polite games for you. This tennis game isn't actually that bad either because this tennis game, I could actually maneuver a little bit better. I seem to hit the ball a little bit better. Of course, I always like the games where I'm better at than not. <laughs> if there's a sports game and I suck at it, I hate it. <laughs> I don't want to have anything to do with it. But this tennis game, eh, it's, it's pretty good. And, and I mean, come on, it's, it's tennis. You've seen tennis before, it's tennis. It's not bad. Not too many games, but which one was your favorite? Let me know in the comments. Gonna be looking at more Game Boy games through the years, as well as other consoles through their own years as well. 